Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. Just a few miles, kind of northwest of Malmesbury, we've come to the little village of Tetbury. This is another place with an incredible history, both political and architectural history. Um, and we're going to show you around this lovely place. This lovely town sits on a hill and therefore had little or no cloth trade to rescue it from the collapse of the raw wool trade. There was no way to power the mills necessary for the change. However, it survived extremely well with a busy general market. Royal patronage made a difference, and even today, with the Prince of Wales's house, Highgrove, just a stone's throw away, the royal influence is keenly felt. Restaurants, shops and galleries abound, and the feel of the place is one of activity and busyness. In 1086, 72 inhabitants of Tetbury were recorded. In about 1710, it was said that the parish contained 300 houses and around 1,200 inhabitants, and the population rose only gradually to roughly 3,500 by 1871. Boundary changes make any comparison a little difficult now, but it's unlikely to be much bigger than that now. In 1144, Stephen's army camped at Tetbury during his operations against the Earl of Gloucester's castles in the neighbourhood. And in the early 16th century, Tetbury was drawn into the feud between Maurice Lord Barclay and the Duke of Buckingham. Hoping to win favour with Morris, who was Lord of the Borough, the bailiff and burgesses prevented the Duke from lodging in the town on his way from Thornbury to London. A meaningful but genteel insult that somehow epitomises the town even today. The main route through Tetbury brought several rulers of England to the town, although only ever in passing. Edward I, Charles I, Charles II, James II and Queen Anne all passed through. But it shouldn't be long now before the town has its very own resident King of England. The Church of St Mary the Virgin is a lovely example of the Gothic revival architecture we've seen often before in the region. Built on the site of a Saxon church towards the end of the 18th century and designed by Francis Huon of Warwick, it was opened in 1781. It's one of the earliest and best examples of Georgian Gothic churches in the country. Since 1781, the church has undergone several changes the most significant being in 1901, and then in 1993, this last restoration attempted to undo much of the Victorianization that had taken place in 1901, and restore the interior as far as possible and practicable to its original Georgian plan. The tower is 187 foot high and is believed to be the fourth highest in the country. It contains a ring of eight bells, most of which were cast in 1722. The church has some box pews, which are accessed from a passageway around the side of the church rather than the central aisle. Dramatic stained glass includes work by Clayton and Bell and William Wales, and a large candelabrum dating from 1781 hangs high above the nave. The market, held on the day Ross and I arrived in Tetbury, was, rather like that in Minchinhampton, a brave but ghostly version of its normal self. Let us truly hope that the progress of 2021 will bring us back to a situation where markets, trade in general and social jollity can return some way towards life as we used to know it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and Ross and I are now working hard on finding ways we can talk about our lovely Cotswolds, despite the restrictions we're all under.